Janet asks, basically, what is the difference between the two tests designed to check thyroid antibodies? There's a TPO antibody test, and then there's a thyroglobulin antibody test. Well, the big difference is, is both of these types of tests show for positive autoimmune hypothyroidism. The difference is the mechanism. So in one case, there's an enzyme called thyroid peroxidase or thyroperoxidase, also sometimes abbreviated as TPO. This enzyme is attacked by the immune system and that's, that enzyme is very, very critical for helping your body produce thyroid hormone. The other, the other antibody test is thyroglobulin antibodies. And basically thyroglobulin is the protein backbone to thyroid hormones. So having a thyroglobulin antibody is just a different way that your immune system will attack the way that your thyroid gland is supposed to make thyroid hormones. So both of them are markers or indicators for what's also known as Hashimoto's disease. And so doctors, when checking for your thyroid, at least effectively, will look at both of these types of tests. A lot of doctors will only measure TPO and uh, just perfect example, I had this happen in the clinic yesterday. I had a patient with high levels of antithyroglobulin antibodies, but not high levels of TPO. And a lot of doctors will not check the thyroglobulin antibody. And so that partic in this particular case, that could have been missed had we not done a thorough check. Okay, let's move into the next question. So question coming in from Liat. Liat is asking, I have, she says, I have hypothyroidism, but cannot take any meds due to mitral valve prolapse and the negative effects the meds have on my heart. What natural regime can I use to boost her, my thyroid? So if you can't take the medicine, you have hypothyroidism. I want to remind you of what we discussed in the summit. If you watch the summit on day seven, I gave very, very lengthy two and a half hour presentation called the autoimmune health matrix. And in that, we talked about what can be done for autoimmune disease, meaning what do you do naturally to boost an autoimmune thyroid condition if you can't take the medications? You have to have a good functional medicine doctor look at those fundamental pieces. The, the, if you recall those, the, those fundamental things, the four funda fundamental umbrellical categorical causes of autoimmune disease, the first being infections, the second being vitamin and mineral deficiencies, the third being chemical exposures, and the fourth being food-based allergens. So if you, if you look at those four things, that's the best natural option that you have if you don't tolerate the medicine. Now, on that same note, I would say that many of you that are taking, especially Synthroid, uh, if you're on that medicine and, you're, and you, you are gluten sensitive and you've been told to avoid gluten, understand that medicine does contain gluten. And so if you're on it and you need to take it, it's very, very important that you work with your doctor to get your prescription compounded to contain the same medication without the filler, without the gluten and grain-based fillers. Okay. These are good questions. Uh, can, Bonnie's asking, can chronic migraine be a symptom of autoimmune disease? Yes. As a matter of fact, um, migraines themselves are a form of autoimmune disease. A true migraine is a form of autoimmunity. And, and what we think happens, this is the, the theory on migraines. There's two premises. One is that there's an autoimmune attack against the nerves and that triggers the migraine, the nerves being in the brain. And then another theory is that there's an autoimmune attack against the blood vessels in the brain that trigger the autoimmune. And I, and I have actually seen both be the case, but migraine is definitely an autoimmune condition. So going back to, again, what we talked about, the reason I put together that very lengthy presentation during the autoimmune revolution was to help you understand that doesn't matter what type of autoimmune disease you've been diagnosed with, if you don't start from the premise of identifying foods, chemicals, vitamin and mineral deficiencies, and infectious agents, then you're going to chase your tail. It's, it doesn't matter whether you have RA, whether you have lupus, whether you have scleroderma, whether you have hypothyroidism, whether you have osteoporosis, which can be a form of autoimmune disease. So it doesn't matter what we call the autoimmune disease because they all have the same fundamental four trigger factors. So Lisa's asking, uh, she says, I, I haven't finished reading No Grain, No Pain, which is, which is my best-selling book, but I would love if you can explain the benefits of fasting and why it's so beneficial. Well, many of you listening have heard about leaky gut. Leaky gut is, is kind of a precursor, can be a precursor to autoimmunity. And so a lot of people are trying to figure out why they have a leaky gut or if they have a leaky gut. Well, 
leaky guts are caused in essence by damage to the GI tract. So where there's damage, we can, we can develop intestinal permeability or leakages. And then those leakages over time can lead to a process called molecular mimicry that triggers autoimmunity. So that being said, what does fasting have to do with any of this? Well, the gut, just like any other organ or any other tissue, if it's overworked, if it's overabused, then it will break down quicker. Okay, think of it like exercise. If you exercise today and, uh, and your muscles get really sore the next day and then you exercise again and you exercise again and you exercise again and you don't take adequate rest or break, what's going to happen to your muscles? They're going to go into a catabolic state of breakdown. They're not going to recover and they're not going to heal and you're going to develop chronic pain as a result of overtraining. Think of that as it relates to your gut. You know, a lot of advice that's out there is eat small meals throughout the course of the day. You know, eat every two hours, eat every hour. You know, this is one of the old weight loss metabolism myths is that if you eat two small meals every hour, you'll increase your metabolic rate and you'll have better success with weight loss. It's not true. What, what the benefit of fasting is it gives your gut rest. Your gut needs rest too, just like your muscles need rest, just like every other organ in your body needs rest. And if we overwork our guts by either one, eating foods we're allergic to, two, um, having an overgrowth of yeast is, is a perfect example. A parasite would be a perfect example of the gut under attack. Um, or if we're eating too much food when we eat, if we're eating too frequently, if we're eating foods that are very hard to digest, dairy is very hard to digest, legumes can be very hard to digest. If we're doing these things on a regular basis, we don't give our gut a break then our gut is over time going to wear down. And it's when it wears down, it has a greater potential to develop leaky gut. So that being the case, remember that fasting helps give your gut a break. The term breakfast is actually, if we break it down, it's break the fast, right? We're breaking the fast. And, and most people, if they go to bed at a reasonable hour, will at least sleep eight hours and there'll be a fast. There will be an eight hour break for the gut, but the gut needs more time off than that, especially if the gut's damaged. So breaking the fast. So think about a fast as, as 12 hours or longer, ideally 16 hours is a really good, what we would call intermittent fast, where, where if, you're, if, you're taking, if you're taking a 16 hour break, so eat an early dinner, eat a late breakfast or brunch, and you'll have a 16 hour window where you're not eating and then the other eight hours you can spend eating. And you don't have to eat less calories, you just have to give an extended prolonged period of time for your gut to heal, rest, recover, just like the rest of your body requires that. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.